All right. <coughs> soon as I start, <coughs> soon as I start recording, I start coughing. How about them apples? But hey, this is Lee Bible in Real Life. Thank you for listening and thank you for tuning in with us today. We're going to be talking about prosperity. Uh oh, and and greed and covetousness and all these things that some people are confused about. So let's talk about it today. Hey, this is Lee Bible in Real Life podcast, and um, we want to go into topics and different things that that believers may be dealing with as we're trying to live out Christianity in real life. So thank you. Welcome. For, um, thank you for coming. We welcome you here. If you're not following us on Instagram and on TikTok and on YouTube shorts, hey, we're pulling out the YouTube shorts now. So make sure you're following us on all the platforms. But I want to jump into this topic today because there is, um, there's two schools of thought. And what I want to give today is a biblical perspective for prosperity, some of the things that we're warned against and some of the correct, um, the correct perception or the correct ideas we need to have when dealing with wealth prosperity, and so forth. So you don't want to miss this episode. Make sure you are locked in and paying attention. So um, getting started, I want to start off with something I heard Creflo Dollar say years ago. And um, Creflo said, I I was teaching about um, salvation and the crucifixion and the blood of Christ to a congregation that was dealing with their bills. They were dealing with not having enough money to um, stay in their house or pay their bills or eat food. So he said he really began to shift and talk a little bit more about prosperity and wealth, right? So as I begin to think about that, I say, oh, that's an interesting perspective on how some of these things got started. So I got, I started looking at the, um, what's known as the prosperity gospel. Um, And as I was doing some research, just to kind of see where did this come from? Because this wasn't a very popular teaching um, before the 1900s, right? Uh, So, well, I take that back. I take that back because we see some biblical references, but, um, in American culture, there was this resurgence of this prosperity gospel or the idea of um, God's desire for you to prosper. And I want to I, I wanna kill some myths and also give a biblical perspective on these things. So huh, this is going to be a good one. We're continuing. Beginning of the year, I like to talk about success. So we talked last episode about... Um, what is success and good success and how we create success. Now, I want to talk about prosperity and money because the word prosper, right, which is mentioned multiple times in the Bible. So it is a biblical concept. This idea of prosperity is a biblical concept. So I want to start there. Well, what is prosperity? Well, the word um often translate pr- translated prosper, prosperity, so forth, literally means to force entry or to cut through, right? Um, but by implication, it has the idea of to be successful, right? So to cut through, um, cut through resistance, cut through, you know, a successful person, um, they're like, hey, they kind of cut through the noise and rose to the top, right? Through years of effort and toil or whatever, they were able to cut through and to experience a level of success, right? So the word prosperity itself, the Hebrew word um, uh, translated prosper and prosperity means to force entry or to cut through. So I believe that that it is God's will and God's desire for people to, to uh, break through, right? And experience um, wealth and to be successful. But... <clears throat> I think it's beyond that, okay? Uh, and let's let's look at some examples. So what I did was, 
I did a very simple search in the Bible. So I'm going to pull up my iPad here and we're going to look at a couple verses. I'm just uh, randomly going through. So in Genesis chapter 24, 21, uh, the man looked at her in silence to learn the Lord had prospered his journey. So this is in the context of, of uh, um, when he's going to look for Rebecca and he said, hey, the Lord prospered my journey. It was a successful journey, right? Hey, the thing I set out to accomplish, I achieved. Um, in Deuteronomy, it says, you shall not seek their peace or their prosperity all the days forever. Well, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, because this is one of the ones that we often see, right? In Deuteronomy chapter 28, the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your livestock and in the fruit of your ground within the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers, right? So um, when, we, when we see in scripture, we see that Abraham was prosperous, right? God made this covenant with Abraham and Abraham did experience wealth. We see that um, Isaac was prosperous, Jacob prospered, even Esau. We saw that, hey, Jacob was like, hey, Esau, um, hey, I want to give you all these gifts. And Esau's like, hey, I'm good. God's been good to me. I got, I got sheep and cattle and all this stuff. So um, the, the founding fathers or the founding family, <laughs> right, um, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Esau, we even see that, that there was a level of, of growth and increase for Ishmael and his family, right? So um, we see that there was an increase in wealth, an increase in land. Now, here's what you have to understand. God promised Abraham that I'm going to make you a mighty nation, right? You can't be a mighty nation if you don't have anything, right? So Abraham's wealth and Abraham's prosperity was due to God's promise to make in, make you into a mighty nation, right? So um, his, his wealth and prosperity was a, a realization of what God promised to him, okay? So um, you may look and say, oh, wait a minute. Does that mean it applies to everybody? Well, let's continue to look at scripture, right? <clears throat> In Joshua 1.8, we went over this last week, but I want to touch on it. In Joshua 1.8, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according that's written within. For then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success, right? So we see again, prosperity is tied to um, obedience to God's word and um, meditating on God's word. So as we're looking through, it's like, okay, well, God wants me to prosper, right? Um, prospering has to be tied to God's goodness, right? Okay. So as we're going through scripture, we're seeing that God desire, we see that a prosperity is happening to those that seek God's word and those that study, you know, when I go and I look at, um, one of the verses I love is in Psalms, Psalms chapter one. Let me go to it. Uh, Psalms one, three says, let me share my screen here. Psalms one, three says that person is like a tree planted by the streams of water um, in which yields fruit in this season, whose leaf does not wither whatsoever he does shall prosper. Okay, so wow, Lee. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, man, it does seem like God desires for his people to prosper. In Psalms, it talks about blessed are those that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So we see this prosperity language for those that um, that spend time in God's word those that base their life and their principles on godly things. So I'm like, okay. Um, so as I'm listening to the YouTube preachers and as I'm listening to various <coughs> others, I see a case for prosperity 
um, happens to those that are in line with God's word. Wow. Okay. This is, this is pretty simple. Uh, close the book. I think we're done, right? Well, not so quickly, right? So, um, and then when I continue to read in scripture, uh, I get to Psalms 73. Now, Psalm 73 kind of messes me up a little bit, okay? Now, Psalm 73, uh, there, is a, there is a Levite, and he's a song maker. His name is Asaph, right? And Asaph says something in Psalm 73. Let's start at verse 1. He says, surely God is good to Israel, to those, uh, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. And I nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Wait a minute. What? They have no struggles. Their bodies are strong and healthy. They're free from common human burdens. They're not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride in their necklace and they clothe themselves with violence from their calloused heart becomes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice, with arrogance. They threaten opposition. Their mouths lay claim to heaven. Their tongues like take possession of the earth. Wait a minute. Hold up. Now, see, this is messing with my theology because I thought prosperity was set aside for those that are righteous, those that are obeying the word of God. And Asaph looks at this and he say, wait a minute. The wicked are prospering as well. And they have callous hearts. They're taking money. They're not living a godly life. So that now I have to recalibrate. Wait, <laughs> that's my mind shifting gears. Like, wait a minute. So you mean it's possible to be successful? It's possible to be wealthy? It's possible to have no care in the world. Bible says they're wearing nice clothes and different things, but they're wicked. Yes. So one plus one does not equal two, meaning wealth and um, prosperity or successfulness does not equal righteous and holy and God honoring and meditating on God's word. See, now, Lee, you're messing, you're messing with my theology, right? <laughs> so if wicked people can be prosperous, then prosperity alone isn't a sign of God's favor. It could be that you're a very good business owner or you're a hard worker or you lie, cheat, steal, scam people, right? The reason I keep getting these scam emails and scam text messages is because somebody's making money off this stuff, right? So they may live in big fancy houses, these scammers. They may live in, they may wear better clothes than I do. So prosperity also happens to the wicked. So that that's messing me up. Right? So God does not equal prosperity. Um, so it's possible to be successful and to be rich and, and be as far away from God as possible. So that's, that's the first point. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, um, and actually the Bible teaches that there is a... There is a problem sometimes when God's people are prosperous. Uh-oh, wait a minute, Lee, you're messing, you're messing me up, man. But I want you to see the truth. I want you to realize that having money, having wealth is not synonymous with having Christ or having a relationship with God. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. And the reason I want to use Deuteronomy is because, remember, in Deuteronomy, there's the blessed in the city, blessed in the field, et cetera, et cetera, language. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, 
And when we go to Deuteronomy 8, let's go 817. Uh, I think that's a good place to start. Uh-oh. I'm talking and trying to type my stuff. So it's it's not working out too well for me. I think I know why. Because I'm misspelling Deuteronomy. You know what I'm saying? So D, uh, I just need the beginning. Uh, D-U-I-T. Okay, Deuteronomy. There you go. Let's go Deuteronomy chapter 8. Um, 8 and let's go 17. Uh, uh, Lee, you're teaching me something. Well, I hope so, because this in the Bible in real life, I want you to see the full picture. So we go in Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse seventeen, and we see. Uh, let's let's back up a little bit. Um, uh, okay, let's go seventeen. Let me share my screen. The Bible says, "You may say to yourself, my power and strength of my hands." have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is this day. All right. Um, so what I want us to remember is <clears throat> God gives you the ability to get wealth, but 17 warns us that there's a challenge. Sometimes when you, a person becomes wealthy, they start to think, I did this. They start to think, um, as the people of God, sometimes you think, hey, it's because of my own effort. It's because of my own abilities. It's because of my own wisdom and effort that I'm able to do this. And um, for the Christian, understand that it's God that gives you that ability to get wealth. But Lee, we saw that the wicked got wealth too. Yes, it's because hard work and different things can also create wealth. Um, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, <clears throat> there was another verse. Ah, I, I didn't put it in my notes. Um, but let's look at First Chronicles. Okay, yeah, we, we're in our Bibles today, brothers and sisters. So First Chronicles chapter, um, First Chron. So I want us to look at, so I'm doing a couple of things. I'm showing you that both are within the same chapter. So in Deuteronomy, we see that God gives us the ability to get wealth. We see that the promises of God was that, hey, you can have wealth, etc., but we also see that it's possible for us to forget that um, um, to forget that God is the source of our wealth. We saw in Psalms that, hey, if you read the Bible and you're studying God's word in Psalms 1, 3, hey, he'll allow you to prosper. But we also see in Psalm 73 that there were those that were wicked and also prospering. So it was causing Christians to be confused like, oh, no. I thought prosperity was always, was only for God's people, right? So let's look at 1 Chronicles chapter 22. I like to use verses within the same book so you just, um, for you to see that, wait a minute, there is this duality here. Um, let's look at 1 Corinthians. So now Solomon, all right? So we're looking at Solomon in 1 Chronicles chapter 22. Um, first Chronicles chapter 22 says, um, verse 10, he is the one who will build a house for my name. He will be my son and I will be his father and I will establish. So he's saying, uh, David is saying that Solomon's going to build the house. Now, my son, the Lord be with you and, and you, and may you have success and build the house, um, of the Lord, your God, as he said, you would. May the God give you discretion and understanding when he puts you in command over Israel so that you may keep the law. Then you will have success. If you are careful to observe the decrees and laws that the Lord gave Moses for Israel, do not be afraid or discouraged. Now, what kind of success he's talking about? He's talking about money because he says, he says in verse 14, I have taken great get pains to provide for the temple of the Lord, a hundred thousand talents of gold 
and a million talents of silver, quantities of brawn and iron too great to be weighed, wood and stone. Here's my point. <clears throat> in order to do things in the kingdom of God, he wanted to build a temple and it took gold, money, um, bronze, silver in order to build a temple, okay? So there is this need for, there is this healthy and positive use for wealth, right? Um, this internet that I'm using to broadcast to you is not free to my home, right? There is a data plan that I'm on <laughs> and there is a, a, a subscription service that I have to pay for in order to have internet. So it costs to give the gospel out. It costs to, to, for TV transmission. Um, churches don't get free light bills from the electric company. So ministry does cost. So God provides, you know, wealth and different things to allow for the furtherance of the gospel. I'm in agreement with all of that, right? Um, but it also costs for... <laughs> for strip clubs to have light, right? Uh, it also costs for um, shows that don't honor God to buy cameras and stuff. So money itself, wealth itself is not an indicator. It's not the only indicator of God's blessing, okay? So uh, un unlock those two things in your mind. Um, God doesn't necessarily... Um, your wealth is not just because you're a good Christian or because you do things the right way. You know, some people will say, hey, God calls me to prosper and I'm selling this dope without getting caught, right? No, that's that's not the blessing of the Lord in your life, right? Wicked people can uh, can be rich, right? Um, you know, and because it's we get so twisted sometimes where we hear that, hey, if I have money, it means God is on my side and God's helping me and God's being a provider. No, no. Wicked people that do evil things also have a lot of money, okay? So disconnect those two. So, well, what does God desire from us? God wants our heart because the Bible says, um, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. In that same context, he said, hey, I closed the lilies of the field. Solomon wasn't as beautiful as the things I created. So God is able to provide for you if you seek first the kingdom of God, right? So I um, hope this is making sense. I'm trying to trying to get all this in and still have a, a somewhat short, um, a somewhat short podcast. Um, Let's look at, his, at Ecclesiastes. And I want to look at Ecclesiastes because uh, I believe that the writer of Ecclesiastes is also Solomon, right? So we're seeing that God blessed Solomon um, as Solomon was building the temple. And look at what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, 14. Solomon said, uh, is that right? 7, 14. Okay, um, yeah, that's right. But there's a different version where, um, let me look at it in the, let me look at it in the, um, come on, Lee. Come on, technology is here, it wouldn't work. Let's look at it in the ESV because I think he's in the ESV where he uses uh, Prosper. Um, New King James, okay. New King James says in Ecclesiastes 7, 14, he says, in the day of prosperity, be joyful. In the day of adversity, consider. Surely God has appointed the one as well as the other so that man can find out nothing that will come after him. Let's look at, uh, that's Christian Standard Bible, New Living, um, New Living says, enjoy prosperity while you can, but when hard times strike, realize they both came from God, right? So <clears throat> not only do 
Does prosperity come from God? Adversity also comes from God because in this life, there is sunshine and there is rain. But if your if prosperity is tied to the blessing and favor of God, when you go through a down season, when you go through a hard time, you may think, wait a minute, God has forsaken me. You may think, oh man, the blessing and the favor of God is no longer on my life because I'm not experiencing, experiencing this prosperity or success. So if you're taking L's, it shouldn't shake your faith that God has forgiven, that God has forsaken you, right? And that's the danger of equating prosperity and wealth with God's goodness or with God's favor. Philippians 4. Many of us are familiar with Philippians 4, 13, right? But I want us to look at Philippians 4, um, Philippians 4, 12, you know, listen, the Bible makes a whole lot more sense when you read more than just one at a time, right? So we're, we're, we're familiar with Philippians 4, 13, right? Philippians 4 to 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, right? But can I, can I read Philippians 4, 12? Philippians 4, 12 says, I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Whoa! So <clears throat> there is a time in the Christian life where there is prosperity and there is abundance. But don't think it's strange if in the Christian life there's also lack and need, right? And Paul is saying, I've learned the secret and God can give me the strength to handle whether I am prosperous or whether I am in lack, whether I'm full or whether I'm empty, right? So what am I saying today? I want you to take two, uh, two to three takeaways. Number one, <clears throat> God does desire for you to prosper. God does desire for his people to live well, right? However, God also uh, realized that there's some lessons, there's some, um, there's some development, there's some character development that comes through adversity. So not only does God allow you to prosper, God also allows you to go through adversity. So when you disconnect your circumstances from whether you have God's favor or God's protection or God's presence, then you'll see that regardless of whether I'm up or down, I still have God because God can give me the strength to handle any situation, okay? So that's kind of the teaching I wanna have on prosperity. Now I wanna look at greed. Because too many times there is this, hey, I know God wants me to prosper. So I'm doing God's word. I'm seeing what's happening. Um, my life is prosperous. I'm being successful. However, there is a danger that comes along with it. So the danger is seen. So let's start with, let's start with Deuteronomy again, because I want us to, to see in Deuteronomy chapter 32, I'm telling you, man, you life is so complicated that you have to really trust God. Deuteronomy. And once again, I'm having a hard time spelling Deuteronomy. Uh, D-E-U-T. There you go. Deuteronomy 32. Watch this. This is, I said, what? I hadn't seen this in a long time. Deuteronomy 32, let's look at 15, okay? Watch this. Deuteronomy 32, 15. It says, but Jeshurim grew fat and kicked. Okay, so first, Jeshurim is 
another name for Israel. It means upright ones. So he's talking about the people of God. He's talking about Israelites. And he says, but Jeshurun grew fat and kicked. He grew fat, stout, and sleek. Then he forsook God who made him and scoffed at the rock of his salvation. They stirred him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations. They provoked him to anger. Whoa! Remember this land that was full of milk and honey? Remember this land that God promised them? And he said, hey, you're going to have lands you didn't build and you're going to prosper? Well, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 32 that Jeshurun or Israel, another name for Israel, the upright ones, grew fat and they forsook God who made him. Sometimes the challenge of prosperity, sometimes the trap of focusing on trust, prosperity and wealth is you get rich and then you forsake God because you turn your attention or you turn your focus to money. Now your security is no longer in God. Your security is in your bank account. I don't have to pray and believe God's going to do it because I can just write a check, right? So the, the problem that Israel ran into, these blessed group of individuals, they got fat. They were sleek. Hey, they live in large. They high on the hill. They forsook God who made them and scoffed at the rock of his salvation. Oh, see, uh, haven't you seen that before? Those that make it, like when they didn't have anything, oh, dear God, bless me, help me. Then when they do make it, they'd be like, it's because of my effort, it's because of my hard work. So, and they forsook God who actually gave them the ability to do it. Man, oh, this is in Deuteronomy. You got to read the whole book, people. Got to read the whole book. The other thing um, I want to look at is in 1 Timothy. In 1 Timothy, we see this. This is that 1 Timothy chapter 6 passage, right? Where some people get it twisted. And I, I'm not one of those people that say you should not have money, right? Because you got to have money. You know what I'm saying? These clothes that I have on, I bought these, right? This camera that I'm recording on, I had to buy that. And they didn't give it to me because of my good looks. They gave it to me because I gave them some money right? Verse 10 says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now watch what he goes on to say. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. <clears throat> Don't get over leveraged one way or the other, right? Don't get so dependent on money that you start to love it. Because if you start to love it, it can pull you away from the faith. You could be just like in Deuteronomy, you forsake God because now your dependence is no longer on God. As you begin to store up different things, you start to depend more on the things. Jesus tells this parable about a rich man. Rich man had barns and he was very prosperous, had all this money and barns were full. He's, he's sufficient. He has enough to take care of his needs, his family needs, to give to the poor and all this stuff, right? But instead of um, giving, he said, you know what? I got so much stuff. I need to build bigger barns, you know? Uh, when they asked Rockefeller how much money is enough, Rockefeller, one of the richest men in American history, when they asked Rockefeller how much money was enough, Rockefeller said a little more. See, now we're into greed. Now we're, we're no longer believing God for prosperity and God taking care of us and fulfilling his word and advancing the kingdom. Now... My love of money can cause me to wander away from the faith. And that's what Timothy warns against. Man, uh, and I'm going to close with this. Jesus said in Luke 16, in Luke 16, 13, the Bible says, 
I'm going to pull it up so you can see it. Luke 16, 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and money. In this series, we've been talking about success. We've been talking about how um, you can have good success, hard work, using your gifts, using your talent. You can become wealthy. God didn't have a problem with wealth. God has a problem with when you try to serve money. When it's no longer about God, when it's no longer about the kingdom, when it's no longer about being able to advance God's work, taking care of widows and orphans, having overflow for you to be able to bless others, when it becomes about the love of money, God says, now you have another master. Now you have an idol. Now you have forsaken God. Now you have began to wander away from the faith. And that is the problem. God doesn't have a problem with you having money. God has a problem with money having you. There's a story of the rich young ruler. And he says, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And God saw his problem. God saw that his issue was his money. And God said, sell all you have and follow me. And the Bible said the rich young ruler left sorrowful. He was like, no, nah, I can't do that. Okay. Sometimes we do a better job with the test of poverty than we do with the test of money. When God blesses you, when you are walking and doing what God tells you to do, be careful because the same God that can give you and can prosper what you do is the same God that needs to be reverenced and praised when you do have. Solomon said, hey, he can give it and he can take it. Job reminds us, God, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But if my relationship stays consistent with you, then I don't lose anything whether I have or don't have. And that's what God wants us to be. All right. So paper chases, go get that money. But don't let that money get your heart. This is Lee Bible in real life. Hopefully through this, you've been able to see that God doesn't have a problem with you prospering. Um, God has a problem when your focus becomes prospering and not on God. When you stop seeking the kingdom of God and start focusing on the money, then you've wandered away and you're in danger of leaving the faith, right? Man, this has been good. I, I've been encouraged, right? Because I'm going to get that paper, but I want God to keep my heart, right? And this is my prayer. If it's going to take me away from God, then I would rather have God than have the paper, right? Solomon heart was eventually turned. Anyway, that's another lesson for another day. Um, but uh, you cannot serve God and money. So seek after God and accept the blessings that he come that comes with it. Um, I'm not even going to get into um uh first false peter how there's false teachers that will come um so sec second peter 2 1 through 3 go ahead and read it sometimes false people false prophets will come and they would change the words because their goal is not the love of god their goal is to get more money and build wealth uh, i'm not going to talk about that this episode, but I might in a future episode. So make sure you subscribe to the Bible in Real Life podcast and make sure you're listening. God desires you to prosper, but God desires your heart because even when the money's gone, you still have Christ. He will never leave you or forsake you. Hey, this is Lee, Bible in Real Life. Man, I hope you've been challenged and I hope you get your money right. But first, get your heart right. Hey, this is Lee, Bible in Real Life. Bye-bye, everybody.